we had a chavrusa the last night here, and uh, I do down base one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines on the bottom. Rishim Elad Rishim Rabbiyana. Rishim Elad Sanim Rabbiyana. Hamochet Tzol Chaver. A lot of you missed last night, so you okay? So you're on two. Okay, on the right page. Okay. So Amari Chaver Tzol Chaver. Somebody who sells sheep to his friend. Came with your Muslim Mashkuchis wants to give your friend the Mashkuchis Kana. That your friend acquires the sheep. Ma Mashkuchis is also Babli. What's a Mashkuchis? East Arm, and some say it's a chutra, it's a stick by which you, uh, you know, um, direct the sheep. East Arm, and some say shrapu kisa, it's a uh, whistle, okay? East Arm, and some say negarita, it's the lead sheep. The lead sheep is the one which leads the rest of them. So, you, in order to hire, in order to acquire a, whatever they're called, they're a flock of sheep, so then the mashkuchi suffices to acquire the entire flock. Which is obviously a little bit of a chiddush, but it makes sense. Uh, and the one is going to continue in this vein. Shema b'shem Rabbi Yosef ben Levi said, Rabbi Yaakov and Rabbi Yosef ben Barabo b'shem b'shem Levi both said, "I'm mocher b'lo chaver." Somebody who sells his friend a well came into muscle of loyal corner. Once you give him the uh, bucket, that's a kidney. Okay, the giving of the bucket is considered to be about the kidney on the well, which is interesting. In the, in the, it's a little bit of a variation between the Bible and the Yushami. I, I, I'll wait up for the next case to get into it. Uh, Rabbi Yochum, Rabbi Yochum, Rabbi Yochum said, I'm not going to buy somebody who sells his friend in his house. Oh, two cases. Kevin should suffer once he makes a pile with Soho inside of the, in the house, Kanoyo. And the pile is a pile of fruit. And obviously this is a warehouse or something which is made to store fruit. And uh, the Shaitari Sisrael adds, According, uh, based on the Yushalayim Bala Basra, that it's got to be, again, not just a house in which you would store fruit, but also fruit which is usually stored in a house. It's supposed to face, you know, I don't know, tomatoes. Something highly perishable, which is not stored for very long. Not material. Doesn't make a difference. It's like the next case. Uh, review of our party, review of our party boy, he asked a question like this. Mosulos mafteach. If you have a house and you gave the key to the buyer, ma, what's the, is this a kidney? So I'm Rabbi Zchaya Chatzani, Rabbi Levi, Rabbi Zchaya, the son of Rabbi Levi said, Machlokus Rabbi Shimon and Chachomi, it's Machlokus Rabbi Shimon and Chachomi. The thing I told him, I learned over there, Hamoser mafteach la amoret, if somebody gives a key to an amoret, a bias to whore. You give the key to your house to Amoret, the house remains to whore. You don't assume it's going to enter the house just because you gave him the key. Tani, Rabbi Shimon Metami. Shimon says, Tommy, once you gave him the, house, the, the key, it's like carte blanche to enter the house. And then we assume he entered the house and made everything to me. So the Shami ostensibly wants to know that it's a machlokas. Based on his machlokas, when you give a key, whether that's considered to be uh, carte blanche or not, so then, in that case, it would be continuing on that. It would be whether it acquires the house or not. Now, truth is, according to the Bavli, when you give over a key, that's considered to be permission to make a kidney, but it's not the kidney in and of itself. From Yusham, it's Masha that the giving of the key is the kidney in and of itself, even without the actual taking hold. You know, you don't need an additional chazaka besides the taking of the key. So then he goes in and knocks a nail on the wall and does something to, to establish, you know, his presence. So it's a two-stage process. When there's new shaman, it's still been it's a one-stage process. But the key itself is what you know, creates the key. Okay? I'm not sure I'm correct about that, but it seems to be a slight, slight nuance. So I don't know, Rabbi Shimon, oh, we just said so. Rabbi Shimon, Shimon, look, he said, Hamoicher Maisus and the shifting a little bit to Davish Lo Balolam, selling stuff which doesn't yet exist. Hamoicher Maisus Sadeh Lo Chaver. I want to sell the types of my field to my friend. Now the truth is, it could be any part of the field. It really doesn't necessarily have to mean Alochik Maisus. Even it can mean the uh, a tenth of my field to my friend, a tenth of the produce. Loss of Klum. It's not a valid state. It's not valid because to Davish Lo Balolam it doesn't yet exist. Okay, so it doesn't yet exist. So therefore, it, the sale is not valid. Similarly, 
uh, if you want to sell the fetus of your maid servant to your friend, either. And Ubre Bamto Khabero, if you want to sell the fetuses of the, your friend your animal to your friend, Los of Bloom, it's not valid either because all these are Dovish Bloom, things which don't yet exist. Now I'm a little bit disturbed by the difference between the language of Vlad and the language of Ubor. It sounds like by a a, 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 a um, by an a, by an an by by, uh, by a human being you can't sell the, the 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 slave as a fetus until after it's born. Right? You can't sell until after birth. But by it sounds like, and we learned this yesterday, it sounds like by a pregnant cow, you can sell the fetus even before the the the, the calf is calf. What you can't sell is a fetus which doesn't yet exist. That you can't sell. But you can sell the fetus which is going to, to the, the fetus which already does exist. And of course the reason for that would be, I think this is what the Usham is saying, differentiation between Vlad and Ubar. Differentiation is that by a person you can't really sell part of a person. It doesn't work that way. But you can't sell part of a person. You can sell rights in a person, but you can't really sell part of a person. But by a um, by an animal, you can sell any part of an animal you want, right? An animal is divisible like that. So therefore, you can just sell the uber of the animal. So what's, what you can't do is sell a potential fetus if it doesn't yet exist. But the actual fetus you could sell. Whereas by human being, you can't sell the human being as slave from yours from your domain to your domain until the human being is actually born. Okay? I think that's what I was trying to say, although I'm not 100% positive about that. Yeah, it wouldn't be awesome but I know if it miscarries. So that's a good point. So therefore, that it's sellable now as opposed to yeah, as opposed to the vlad of a human being, the fetus human being. You can't. So that's a very nice uh, distinction. The fetus human being is not also but I know if it dies, whereas the fetus of an animal is not. So therefore, the fetus of an animal could be sold distinctly. As a fetus of you and being not. That's very nice. Very nice. Shreya. Okay. Says Uh Khabero. If you sell the airspace in your ruin to your friend, also Klum, that's also not a valid sale. It's pretty explicit. You show me. I don't, I don't recall if there's such a thing in the Bible that you can't sell airspace in and of itself. Airspace is not a commodity. Okay, that's what it says here. Uh... Ella, rather, uh, what you can do in all these cases is uh, uh, you sell your field, the entire field, and you retain the maestros. Now, meaning, um, well, the well, question is how it's transferable. Yeah, there is a right. No, there's chazok on airspace. That's true. But the question is how it's transferable as opposed to retainable. But the point you're making is about point because that's really what the Gemara is making in the next line. Because the Gemara says, um, that, that line I just read, uh, you, uh, you, you sell the, uh, the, the, the entire field and the buyer retains the right to them, returns you the field, except he retains the right in the field for the maestros. So it's interesting. I'm not sure we have to do it in a two-stage process. Why you can't just sell the rights in the field for the maestros to begin with? But the Ushami is proposing is selling the entire field, and he'll re- to sell you back the field, retaining the rights to the maestro in the field. So it's not that I'm because it's the rights in the field to whatever maestro it's going to produce. Well, it's a brera, but it's it's not brera, it's not a brera, which is a prop, because you know how, you know how much you're going to get. In other words, the, you don't know which commodity you're going to get, but you know how much you're going to get. So that so that's not not as big a problem as brera. Okay. So uh, and um, similarly. Uh, uh, Michael Obama, 
you sell him back and then you sell him the animal. Mashiach love Vlada and you, he when he sells it back he retains the rights to the kid. That works. Mochel of Khurba, you sell him a ruin. Mashiach love and he sells it back to you uh, with uh, 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 keeping the um, retaining the rights to the airspace. Now, on the other end, now the the, the Ushami shifts gears a little bit, and of course, it, it seems like this is uh, the next the the, the Majbiyah takes out the whole next part. It says this doesn't really fit in because it's not the following line scenario we just had. Could be sort of an alternate scenario, but here we're not telling totally, totally about selling the entire yard and then this, the buyer retained the airspace when he sells it back. Right, we're talking about selling the airspace. How does that work? What's an out by which a person can sell his airspace to his friend? The part that we can resolve when he says to, to the buyer, uh, pluck something obviously in a beneficial way out of this ruin. Shetikna, in order to acquire, it should be avir instead of echad meiser. You should acquire avir sheba. So you can you can't acquire the airspace directly, but you can acquire a portion in the land and piggyback the airspace on top of that. Okay, that works. To piggyback something intangible on the basis of a tangible kinyan, that's legitimate. Okay, to make a kinyan on an intangible in of itself, that's not going to work according to the run. Yeah. So, um, what? Well, it's not Kinaga. Kinaga really, I mean, that's our mission. That was the mission. Kinaga refers specifically to metallic, to movable objects atop, uh, uh, atop uh, Karka. But he was saying even uh, one movable object can be sold on the basis of the, okay, uh, one movable object, oh, sorry, I got one movable object. Is how is it defined? It can be um, I, I'm sorry, a movable object. No, it's not a move object. What a, an intangible right can be sold piggybacked on a tangible object. That's what we're saying here. Okay? Instead of a movable object on top of a car cut, you were saying an intangible on top of a tangible. Okay? So, say some more further. Um, the general view of Tilchos uh, Kinyoni. Uh, Uh, uh. Right, you know, I skipped the case, sorry. The Kokakalfonov, the lad the other case, the case of Meisters, also according to this version of Mara, you uh, the land is in front of you. Shomila you say you say to the individual, close me to Kakaze, uh do a plug something out of the ground to establish a Kenyan with the intent that it's not going to be a full Kenyan, but rather, in order to acquire one tenth of the land. So, there to acquire a Kenyan in the land for the Maisa, which might be a Dover Shabbat, but right now your portion is in the land dormant, waiting for that Maisa to come about. Okay? Says the Gemara, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Zir, and Rabbi Chiyab, Rabbi Shem Rav, all said, Ein Meshicha, Koine, Bechot, Shem, Shoshneim, a simple Chazar, and Hilchus Kinyon. There is no Meshicha by a courtyard which belongs to neither of them. Avo, uh, 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 Tani Rabbi Chiyu Polik. Rabbi Chiyu argues, and he says, We pass Rabbi Chiyu. Amos Sayyam Ramatazi Nikli Meshicha. When they say the Metazi are acquired by pulling them, if the Mashiach takes place in a public domain, of a Chatzishenish's name or in a courtyard which is neither one of theirs. Our Shusalokiach, but if it's in the uh, uh, domain, the jurisdiction of the buyer, even without Mashiach, came a Chakibah love once the Baal Bayis, the Mocher, 
relinquish consciously his ownership so then nothing further must be done uh, uh, that's what it says then it's his immediately if however we're talking about where you acquire whatever stuff he's acquiring in the seller's lot right he doesn't acquire it until the time he lift, lifts it up Oh, or Shaim Shal Ryotse Chutz Rishus Bailam, uh, Chutz. Uh, Rishus Bailam, until you leave the domain of the current owners. So, in Rishus of Amokher, this kind of holds that Rishira does work in a public area, but it doesn't work in the backyard of the Mokher of the seller. So, it's got to be at least a symbolic exiting of the prior jurisdiction into new jurisdiction and you can't do that in the seller's yard right uh, unless no it only takes place in the book no 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 kind of come here said only we should say I'll be old also we should survive it yeah yeah okay uh, uh what if the stuff is by a third party? So Lokona, he doesn't acquire So if it's in the hands of a third party, nobody can make any acquisition at this point uh, until he acquires them, or until meaning, I forgot what that means, one second. When it's in the domain of a watchman, so then locally doesn't need the, the, the buyers not acquire until the the the, uh, uh, the watchman until he actually takes possession of them, or or until he until he rents the place where they're standing. So the bottom line is that. Um, I'm still not happy about this. I'm sorry. Huh? Okay, yeah, now Pnei Moshe made me happy. Sorry. Pnei Moshe said, uh, uh, he doesn't acquire it. They're in the hands of third party, so it's not an acquisition. And until that third party agrees to act as, as attorney for one of the two people in the Kenyan, in which case he can then act and make the Kenyan on the guy's behalf. That'll work. Or the other possibility is, oh, at Jesus Christ, Macomo. The other way you can make Kenyan, if it's in the hands of a third party, is by uh, the uh, the second party renting out the property for the purpose of Kenyanim to the first and the third parties who are involved. Okay, is that relatively clear? Okay, when it's in the hands of the person, I, 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 the person who's nifka, the person given is a watch. So then there are two ways to make Kinyon. Either the Nifkat that can become one of their agents, or the um, they could take the, the the buyer can take it out of the Nifkat's backyard. But Mashicha in the Nifkat's backyard, in the house of a neutral third party, is not gonna work. Okay? Unless it becomes your agent, in which case the Mashicha does work. Okay? So says the Gemara. Um Khachomarim. Even small animals, even sheep, are acquired by pulling. My time, Rabbana, what's the reaction of Rabbana? It's an extremely amazing rationale. The reason is because Mishchu Chulachem Tzol, Mishpucho Seichem. By Korim Pesach, it says, pull and take sheep for your families. So from this we learned that how do you acquire sheep? By pulling. I don't remember this in the Bible, this structure. Okay, I don't think that actually is in the Bible. Um, says the Gemara, now we actually, Isha, instead of Kihar, you should say Isha, 
No, sorry, that key you just take out. Don't change the shah. Should be Rabbi Yehuda Sholach. It should be say Rabbi Yehuda Sholach Rishol. It should be Rabbi Yehuda ask Rabbi Eliezer because Rabbi Yehuda that's going to appear a few times here. So Rabbi Yehuda ask Rabbi Eliezer the following question. He asked him. Vema gasim and main weakness. How do you acquire a large hand which you can't carry or pick up, right? So it says, Amar Amalei bin Mesira, by giving it over. Amar Lei, so he said, Vulom uh, SDC, what are you telling me, which is not a Mishnah? Everything you say, no, in the Mishnah, right? Vema gasim and weakness. Bin Mesira, it says, in that a, a large animal is acquired by, by giving over. It says, Amar Amalei, so he said, Vulom. Uh, uh, he's tiny. I'm sorry, it doesn't say yet. So I'm again. Uh, he's tiny, tiny. But those who said, Michlof Rabbi Yehuda, that Rabbi Yehuda changed his mind. And, uh, um, I forget what that means, too. It means like this. Rabbi Yudha sent uh, a question asked Rabbi Lezer. How is the Bein Magasa acquired? And he told him Bein Magasa is acquired by Mesira, right? So what's the Kiddush? We know that, right? That's explicit that Bein Magasa is acquired by, by Mesira. Right? So it says, well, so the, the, the response that that wasn't so close because there weren't some Tanoim who learned the opposite. That Bein Magasa is acquired by picking, uh, by what? Uh, Bay Magas is apply, acquired by what? Yeah, but they are acquired by Mesu. Okay. So change around would be to say Bay Magas requires a ball. I don't see how we would say Bay Magas requires a ball. You can't carry them, they're too heavy, it makes no sense. What? There is such an opinion, yeah. Yeah, the Bible there was actually no, not here. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work here. I guess you're right. That's what the Ben Carmen seems to say. That the, those who said that, well, not you're not, not exactly what he's saying. That uh, the uh, the um, the whole list of stuff, which is mentioned in Mishnah, attributes Mesira to large animals and Mashiach to small animals. But that those who said that uh, that. Um, Mashiach is on both. That's what it must be. There, there, there are those who said Mashiach. No. There are those who switch Mashiach and Mesira. That's what it was. Some people change what it says Mashiach to Mesira and what it says Mesira to Mashiach. So small animals and large animals, the two possibilities, large animals are, are, are uh, small measure versus large measure. And the, the whatever else is coming could be small measure versus large measure as well. Uh, not, not measure. Uh, not small and large. Sorry. Mashiach and Mesira. Sorry, that was totally bad. Scratch that. The, uh, 
It's very simple, and I'm just getting mixed up in points here. The Mashiach Masira is the Mashiach Masira are attributed to our Mishnah Masira to large animals and Mashiach to small animals. So those who switch it around and say Mashiach is on large animals and Masira is on small animals. So you say that you shouldn't make such a mistake. You should know that it's always Masira for large animals and Mashiach for small animals. That's all Rabbi Huda was. Uh, we got a message from Rabbi Lezer, no more, no less. Right, one could say that too, but it says you're machlit, which means it was bad, uh, the, you know, the alternative is yeah, the reverse. Okay, I'm going to show Rabbi Lezer. Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Lezer, another question. A bechor, a human bechor, which was eaten by a tiger within the first three to 30 days of its existence, or anything of that sort. So do you have to pay the five sword for putting that bed? And we know if it dies in the first thirty days, you don't. What if it gets into it becomes a trait? Do you have to redeem it or not? Because the reason why you don't have to redeem it first if it dies for the first thirty days is obviously it wasn't a viable child. But if it got an unnatural death, so it means it was a viable child, right? It's just that death intervened, right? So what's the status? So it says, "My Rebbe Shal Shal Rebbe Lezer, Kabchoshin Eto Shloshim Amar Lezer." He said, "Kemash Hamais." It's the same thing like death. Who put in Chamesh Tloim? It's like a motzim mechaber lo avaraya. Unless you know the kid was a viable kid, he doesn't. The father doesn't have to pay the five Tloim. Therefore, the kid died, even of unnatural causes. Right? We still say that if the father doesn't have to redeem the kid ex post facto. Says more further. Uh, 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 if you have an amniotic, amniotic sack, half of what came out today, tomorrow another half. So what's the woman's status? And they say, he said, we're marking on both accounts. In the doctor, Mona, do you want to count to the 66th or 80th day? When she'll be to her? So then you count count that from the um, uh, 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 you count the end of that period. I'm sorry, she's taught ta- her between day seven or, or day fourteen and day thirty three and day sixty six. No, between day seven and day forty, and between day fourteen and day six eighty, then it whether it's a boy or a girl, right? So you may tire the the chumra is to end. You may tire as early as possible. So when do we end the Tara? Counting from the first day of the amniotic sac coming out, not from the second day. Because that ends in a day earlier. You made two of the days she's actually tarmate. Right? Here the blood is flowing and makes her us her husband as opposed to blood flow, which doesn't make us her husband. And there we want to be machmir as much as possible. So there we push that off by day and say we follow the second day of the amniotic sac grow. Okay, so actually she loses a day at the beginning, a day at the end. So it's 79 and 39 instead of 80 and 40, and it's also going to start a day later. So she loses the day on both sides. Says the Gemara, I'm Rabbi Matanya. Rabbi Matanya said, "Hold on, Tamar. Let's turn the page." That's true. B'shloim yotzei ma'avlat. If there was just a sack without a child, without a fetus, I'm yotzei ma'avlat. If a fetus came out with the sack. Bein l'tam tor, bein l'tam tomi. Whether the bull were counting for tor blood or tomi blood, aina mona el mishasi tisa blood. We always go after when the kid comes out, not earlier than that. Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Lezer. This is actually a very famous gemara. It just happened to accumulate here in Kedusha. Rabbi Yehuda Shal. Well, not all of them. Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Yehuda Shal, Rabbi Lezer. Said Rabbi Lezer, final question. Shomer shemaser shomer. If one watchman gives to another watchman, delegates authority, what's the status? Armalei say said Arishon Chayav, the first Shomer is liable. Rabbi Yochan also said Arishon Chayav, the first Shomer is liable because he shouldn't have given over. That was negligent. And other opinions are, and and um, seems that Rav's opinion is one of them. Rav is very shlokish, although Rav's not here. Shai turns so brings them down. Rav is shlokish. Amar, they both said Hasheni Chayav. That the second guy is the second guy is liable, not the first guy. Okay, second guy is liable, not the first guy. So it says the uh, 
Talmud Sneer. We learned over there. Asogre Paral Chaver. Somebody who, who, who rents his friend. This is a very unique case. We had it back in Suvis. You rent a, a an animal, a donkey, let's say, to your friend, right? You're renting it. Uh, and the, the, the renter lends this, uh, this, 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 uh, um, Yeah, he rents the animal, sorry. I saw a friend of Shulach, you rent an animal from, it hurts rent an animal, and you lend it to somebody else, who may so then the animal dies the normal way. So you shove Asoka, the simple shower would be, the, 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 um, the, what? The renter. The original renter. Yeah. Uh, let the the original renter die to testify that uh, and take a note that it died normally. Let the show pay whatever he has to square off with the uh, socher. So it says Except that how could that's a good question, but the more has an even worse question, or an even better question. Um, Rabbi Yossi has said, Kate, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. If that's the case, so then, who's going to make the profit on the deal? The Soche, the bar, or the, the renter, right? Because so he gets off scot free, and the show has got to pay him, right? So Kate Salo says, How's he making money of his friend's misfortune, right? Rather, if there's any funds accumulated, it goes back to the original, uh, uh, the original owner. Rabbi Lashem Rabbi Anai said, Now all this is when, Ahomachlok is where permission was granted to uh, authorize to lend out further, right? Avoloni Tamashu slash Hill, but at the Socher never got permission to rent out to other people. Lobado doesn't go count. The time we also learned Rabbi Chia came, Rabbi Chia taught us this. Ain't a Shora Shaila Shil. A borrow may not lend unto others. La Socher Rashai, Lash Lashil, nor may a. Uh, uh, what? La Socher Rashai. Did I skip one? I skipped the line. Sorry. And show a shayla shield. The la shovel socher a shayla skier. Nor may the um, the, uh, the 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 subletting is not permitted. The la shovel a shayla skier. Nor may a borrower sublet. La socher nor may a renter a shayla shield uh, rent out. Uh, to, uh, uh, you know, lend, loan out as loaners. Uh, uh, it's low. Normally, somebody is given an object for say peep, keeping. Rashaev ki de or give it to anybody else. Ellen K. Nolus is by them. All these things are not permissible unless there's permission or authorization from the owners. The Kulon Shishinu, Shalomi Das Bailim. If they changed in the orders without their 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 or their their master's consent, chayovin, they're they're liable because they're poshea, because they didn't keep the terms which they were uh, which they were uh, they were uh, they were given. Right, this is Shemesh Master Shem and Bab Metziah. That's right. Okay, only here for some reason the Ushami sees fit to bring it down here. Um, a borrower, uh, in the true sense of the word, where he, he's just borrowing without paying, a few loshina, even if he didn't change what he was told to do, chayim, he's liable because the chayim and own owns it. Ella, rather, so so it all should be pushed. So what's the chiddush? Ella, begin the tiyatam on since we learned over there. Masne shomer chinam lios kepater mishvua, a shomer chinam. Can make it tonight to downgrade the shmirah. 
these these plots are even from any oath whatsoever. By Shoel, a uh, tenant might be allowed. Uh, Leos, um, he can uh, he can uh, he, he can um, he can make a stipulation. Leos plots him in the shot to be free from paying in certain circumstances where a Shoel normally pays, right? So you can tailor shape your a uh, your the, your terms. So therefore, we're trying to say here. Uh, And even if you, even if the Shoel or the Socher, even the Shoel tried to buy out his responsibility, so in this case, of Shomer Shemosel Shomer. It must all be one run, one on sentence. Otherwise, I don't remember. I don't understand what's going on. Yeah. Let's start again from Ella Begin, which is one, two, three, four, five, six lines from where the lines get wide. Uh, begin the Tito, and since it says over there, Matzah Shomer Chinam Leos Patim in Shvua. A Shomer Chinam can be sent over in Shvua, and a Shol also can, even though he's normally liable for every single possible scenario, nevertheless, he can stipulate that he's exempt. He can tailor make a shmira. So Asa Memel is coming to tell you, even if he tailor made that with the socher, I feel he's doing Moshe Upater, even tailor made that with the, with, the, with the guy who rented from the original owner, Chayav, he's liable to make a shmira if Bikesh, if the original owner quest slash be as a show to make the show pay, to make the show take the oath. In other words, the Shoah might have made a deal with the with the uh, Socher, with the guy who rented, that he should be exempt. But the master can leapfrog over the Socher and make the Shoah take the Shua, which a regular show would have to take regardless. Okay? Because ultimately it belongs to the master and he wants to find out what's going on. Okay? Um, and, uh, uh, I mean, I thought we learn out from here. Class of law, this is a Gemara we had in Tzuvah, for that matter, this whole Gemara is in Tzuvah. Class of law, if you wrote to your wife, then her shua in the Alayich, she's running your business for you. You wrote, like, Chav Time's wife, right? Ran a store for him. So you wrote to your wife, Neder Shvua, in the Alayich. I renounce the right to make you take a Neder Shvua. So in that case, in the Yochel Ashbi, you can't make her take a Shvua. Avul Mashbiya, but you know you can make take a Shvua? You can make take a Shvua as your share her heirs and and the people who work for her. So Adam Rosen teaches us if you can leapfrog over your wife who you exempted and get to workers, Adam Rosen teaches us you can leapfrog over the Socher and get to the Shoel to the Bar Shumashbiel. And we can learn how to actually from our case to, to the case of 
woman, your wife, from our case of a shul. Shimbigesh lash bias aisha, if you want to make the woman herself make a shua, or should be she'eno mashbia, not she'u mashbia. It's the opposite, Ritba says. You can't make her take a shua, right? Even though she gave it on to somebody else, right? Your deal with her is set. You gave her permission to give it on? You, even though you can make her underlings make shwas, she you can never make take a shwa. So they go over here, once you gave the sokhar permission to rent it on, you have no right to demand a shwa from him, even though you can leapfrog over him and get to his underlings. Okay? So it says, the Gemara, the Gemara, the Gemara, the Gemara, the Gemara, the Gemara, the that we didn't have to learn out from our case. Uh, we didn't learn have to learn out one case and the other case. Both cases stand their own. What do we have to learn from that case from our case? That you have to give permission to your renter to, um, to, to loan it out to somebody else. So to here has to be Shenazala. The husband gave her permission. She would now put trapping that her children for for as guardians. Our Rabbi Yosef is said. Sorry, Chalal so the Shaitur so changes this in Ksuvas and here as well. Sorry, Chalal so Pora calls Manchi Schura Etzlo. This is one of the most ironic cases in Shasli. I I rented out to you a cow. You then loan the cow to somebody else, right? The cow died with permission. The cow died on, uh, well, was on loan to the other guy, right? He's a showman. So he's got to, he's got to pay you for the cow, right? You don't have to give the, you don't have to pay however the cow's value to the, to the guy who lent it out to you. Why? Because you are a showman, a socher. Socher is exempt in cases of death, right? So when the showman pays, who's the show pay? The socher, right? On the other end, the Sokha already paid his schirus, right? So the original owner's got to provide him with another cow. Right? Because the original owner owes him a cow to you, so he's got an extra cow now. He's got a cow which which is paid to him by the Shoel, and besides that, he has a cow to work with, which the masker has to provide him, because he already paid his rental fees. Okay? So that's a great way to make money or make accounts. So, and furthermore, says the Gemara, of Rabbi Zir Shal Rabbi Avuna. Rabbi Zir asked Rabbi Avuna, Shalu Abilin. What if the owners of the cow, the, uh, the same guy who rented it out, at, borrows it back from the guy who rented it out for him? Right? What about that? Umeso. And then the animal dies. So then, boy is he up the creek because he himself the the owner who rented out has got to pay because he became now a borrower and he's got to give him another cow to use at the same time because the guy paid tenancy okay so that's it says uh uh I'm like uh 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 same thing and even if the original owner ate it because it was his cow you say ah 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 you borrowed it back and you ate it as a borrower so you have to provide for the cow to the tenant and give him a cow to work with besides says the Gemara I'm said no we don't take it that far if they slaughter it show him a clue they were slaughtering their own cow and they don't have to pay for having slaughtered their own cow to the uh, to the tenant who, bar- who, who rented the cow for them. okay says the Gemara I'm Rabbi Yisrael Boon Rabbi Yisrael Boi Kun Rabbi Yasi and he asked Rabbi Yisrael asked for Yasi hey God you know what do you do by Shomer Shemosa Shomer and Lomaisa and he said he said Trey Kol Kodil Arba two people say the second Shomer is Chayim four people say the first Shomer is Chayim so two against four Lo Adi Nuvda Basugya wouldn't do anything in the Sugya against the four right so I'm related. So he said, "No, trade call, call trouble, train. So it's two against two. Because Rabbi Lezer, I mean, it's Rabbi Chia, Rabbi Lezer, student of Rabbi Chia the Great, and Rabbi Yehuda, I mean, Rabbi Yana, 
So therefore, it's four, but there's, in the four, there are two students and two, two teachers against two, two people, so it's really two against two. When no resolution that blessed the chief. Rabbi the Shalach Shal Rabbi Lezer. Rabbi the Wet and Asher Lezer following case. Rachim Shechoku, brothers split up an estate. Vacharkach, and then afterwards, after they split the estate 50 50, that a brother who died, but had died before they split the estate. Nimim Echabem, one of them was Miyabe and that guy's wife. So does it cancel the Chalukah, which they already divided? Because now he did Yibum and he should get whatever the deceased brother's portion was, or we keep it intact. Uh, Man. Normal eight, so he said it should be really next few three words, four words should be Zachu Kula Menich Sameis. Every acquires equally the property of the dead, dead God, of the dead, the dead parents, the dead brother. Ula Bari Shmuel Omar, which Shmuel says should be Matzis. Matzis means I check it out. And it should be outside the Rabbi Lezer. Uh, according to Rabbi Lezer, what the story is. And after I checked it out, it came out, Loshani Usha Choku Vacharka Chivim. Makes no difference that they still probably 50 50. And then they did Yuma on third brother's wife. Or Yuma uh, Chaim, uh, one of them did Yibum. Or Shiva Mechomem, one of them did Yibum. And then, top of the sign off, Vacharka Choku, and then divided up. Zochu Kulem and Ixamis. Since at the time that, uh, 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 since they didn't take it into account, uh, uh, since they didn't take it into account until later, and they already divided up the property, so we say they were Michael, whoever did give them to the other one. Okay? The Lama, Lama Marle. Uh, 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 why did he why did the cases they were talking about speak about brothers divided up and then did Yibum say the even bigger Kiddush that the Yibum then divided up then in that case the Yibum affords no advantage because they divide up equally and that's like Shtika Kodo almost that he conceded it's equal division so that's more why uh, uh uh Amalei so he said Madashali had given up he answered the question was asked the question was asked where the vision occurred and then the evil occurred afterwards why did they ask the additional question of first where you occurred and then the vision occurred then Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar Rabbi Yatsi because Rabbi Yatsi said Rabbi Yatsi already B'chor Shechilek Kipashu L'chazok Aviteher B'chor Shulge Pishnayim who, 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 we, who divide up equally we assume that he was Michael his extra portion so to Yavim is called the Bukhar so if he divided up equally after Yavim we assume he's Michael his extra portion and Eichanami doesn't get it he has to assert it either when he does Yavim or at the time of Chalukah whatever comes first but if he does Yavim first or does Chalukah first without asserting his right to double as a Yavim he loses that right of Yavim okay Says the Gemara Reisha of Vaiter. Again, Rabbi Yisrael Chshal, Rabbi Yisrael Blazer. Achin Shachoku. It's interesting. A Gemara not in the Bible, but it's brought down the postkin. Brothers who split up in the state. Amalei Yastin. Chokim Ashle. No, it's a statement. Amalei. So he said, Chokim Ashle. And Rabbi Yisrael said they divide the clothing which is on their backs. They take into account the dividing. But we say we assume that they're Moichel and we don't count whatever their sons and daughters are wearing. Ravami, Ravami says along these lines, Ose Shum Lebeso. Somebody who's making a, uh, uh, a, um, a, a, a reckoning of the estate in order to make a dowry for his daughter from his hat. So Mivian Shum it should be Lamsa. We make it and we take out Latsma. We make it uh, precisely even. Right? The Chokin and divide it up. Because nobody nobody's Moicho that the other guy should use the common properties of dowry. Libito if somebody already however made for his son or do- for made for his daughter a choker a necklace. So envy lecture, just like the son's daughter's clothing, is not evaluated, neither is the necklace. 
anything that's a chok, you don't have to take it into account. Just assume it's water under the bridge. But that's only if it's a vocha dika necklace, a weekday necklace. However, I have a brutal stamish barrego if it's a yontif dika necklace, with Elan Sukhok, and then the other brother holds in this dowry and says, Whoa boy, I want to make sure that this goes into our distribution of the estate, because this is a yontif dika necklace, not just a regular one. What's interesting also the next line. Rabbi Mana Mark Clay Rego Hokin. If it's a weekday thing, you don't divide it. Clay Rego, you don't think things are taken account. Clay Shabbos, Srikha. Shabbos, you don't know, because Shabbos is in the middle. Because you don't think you wear your finest clothes. Weekday clothes are not worth so much. Shabbos clothes are somewhere in the middle. We don't know if they get hauled in to, in order to arrange redistribution or not. Right? Rabbi Abim Shitale, by Rabbi Abim's portion. Bankly Rego, Bankly Shabbos, revealing them to Choki and bring in the middle and split up again. Rabbi Zira, Baikun, Rabbi Mana. Elan Busai, what about mirrors? Now don't ask me why mirrors were so precious. What about if every, all the girls in the family have a lot of mirrors? Both boys, you know, both the sons of the deceased father, their daughters have mirrors. Do we re, do we take that account of distributing the estate? I guess because mirrors are part of the makeup. Maybe they should be considered part of clothing. And therefore, we said clothing doesn't on, on the backs of the kids isn't take isn't assessed. But what about the mirrors? So he said, Amalei. So he said, Chakimat. You know, Yislach Bulsin Sagin. I know. Uh, uh, you you know that you have a lot of mirrors in your family. I guess he had a lot of vain daughters, right? But that mar here. No, that mar. So you know you have a lot of vain vain daughters. So that's we're asking this question. So Amalei. So he said, Mevin Mechokin. We do this to, to, to look, take a and look at how we ask how many mirrors in order to distribute it properly. Rabbi Lashach, Rabbi Lazar. Rabbi Lashach, ask Rabbi Lazar, final question. If you have an outstanding debt, Malik votes me now, voting Kikakos. You collect from slaves like you collect from land, which is even from the soy name and such like. And when they said, yeah, go ahead and have a because our slaves are like our coats. Hoi Rabbi Lazar, Lee Lane, the base Rabbi Yanai, Lee Paskin, this Halach Lamaisa. Leave us in our goes. Rabbi Yudah Shoach Shoach Rabbi Lezer He asked a final question Hanas These are all questions Rabbi Yudah to Rabbi Lezer tonight Hanas Somebody who still uh, Who compels people to uh, Sell him property Against their will Bagazlon A thief Bagan of a burglar So uh, uh, When they restore the animals Do they restore the novella Or they restore a brand new animal So the answer is uh, after They restore the novella Plus cash on top, or they give a brand new animal. So he sent back Armelay Chazaka Shay to buy him on top of Mesa. The the original owners have to take back the carcass. We know he shayna buy him on top of Mesa. How do we know this is true? Am Rabbi Bob Bar Memo Chaim Shnai Mishalim. So he was paying double Chaim for Lo Mesa, live and not dead. Akadum Gedeva. It's about Gedeva where it's double, right? And so what about Gazela? I'm right. If you be shiva sagzela asher gazal, asher gazal be'ene means as he stole it. That means a live animal and not a dead animal. Okay, we'll stop here for tonight.